Now it's my honor to uh, welcome to our stage, and you're going to be able to hear from the governor of the state of North Carolina, Roy Cooper, and we're very glad to have him here. Uh, I've been able to see him a couple of times this week, a couple of nights ago. Uh, we were his guests at the governor's mansion in the people's house, as he uh, reminded us, uh, for a celebration of the 45th anniversary, as we talked yesterday, of the very first Office of Rural Health established in the United States, the North Carolina Office of Rural Health. Great event, great people, great celebration. Um, and we believe in really in celebrating those uh, milestones and in celebrating the people that went before us that really created a lot of opportunity. Um, as we've moved around the state on our own rural road trip, we're, uh, we encounter uh, in most rural communities where we're going, either right before us or right after us, Prior Gibson and Mary Penny Kelly have been visiting. And uh, some of the governor's cabinet members, as they've gone out with Hometown Strong, the governor's rural initiative, um, and we enjoy that um, interaction. Uh, I'm sure the governor's going to remind you of his mission pledge. I think that is a habit of his to keep us all on point with what he is doing. Um, I want to personally thank him, and I'm sure a number of you in the room do as well, for the, the attention and the time and the way your team has worked very effectively following Hurricane Florence. Uh, just a devastating um, disaster, and, and the team has done a remarkable job of really responding to what's been happening on the ground. Um, we don't have to, um, we don't have to talk to this governor and, and teach him, or he doesn't have anything he needs to learn from us about what it means to be rural, because he, he, he gets that. He grew up there um, as a native of Nash County. Uh, and on one humorous note, my good friend Phil Kirk's here with us in the audience, and I understand he has a, a really good um, and, and quite humorous um, talk that he gives about the 10 governors that he's known. And so he's going to be sharing with me his uh, cliff notes on your section of that, uh, of that talk. I understand it's, uh, it is quite humorous. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Governor Roy Cooper. Thank you guys very much. Patrick, thank you for that introduction and for your continued leadership in rural North Carolina. I try to come to as many of these assemblies, uh, rural center gatherings as I possibly can because I believe that I can contribute to the dialogue and we can pull together to make North Carolina smarter and stronger, and particularly our rural areas, because if our rural areas aren't smart and strong, the whole state is going to be pulled down. I, I want to say to you, many of you are leaders in rural North Carolina, in the last few weeks have been unprecedented for much of the eastern part of North Carolina. This Hurricane Florence was the worst natural disaster that has ever hit North Carolina by far. Eight trillion gallons of rain within a five-day period uh, can fill up Jordan Lake 536 times. This storm was an unwelcomed brute that would not leave. Moving across this state four to five miles an hour, even slower than uh, a brisk walking pace at some point. Some people's roofs damage, and then 30 inches of rain on top of that, with a 10-foot storm surge, with flash flooding, with riverine flooding that came later. And the total damage, the loss of life, 42 lives lost, we mourn them and we mourn with their families. And almost $17 billion worth of damage to our state. Now that is more than Matthew and Floyd combined. And I lived in Rocky Mount in 1999 during Hurricane Floyd. I know what kind of devastation flooding can cause. And I know how long it takes to recover. 
I'll tell you that people have been through significant struggles, as you know. I've been to these counties uh, two and three times, meeting with local leaders, meeting with hurricane survivors, going into schools that have been closed for weeks at a time, talking to farmers in a cotton field or in a tobacco field where everything is gone, talking to church members that have their sanctuaries underwater, small businesses that are struggling to open back up, and people who essentially didn't have much to start with have now lost everything. It's enough to tear your heart out in talking to people. I'll tell you this though, the thing I did see and the thing I experience every single day when I talk to North Carolinians is their strength and their resilience. Talking to a senior who lived in an apartment in Wilmington, her family was far away, she didn't see them very much. 15 minutes she was given to get out of her house. Water coming under the door. A brave first responder goes in, a firefighter from Wilmington, pulls her out, puts her in a boat to take her to a, a shelter. She was only able to gather a few things, and as I talked to her and asked her about her story, she told me she was alone, and she told me these few things. She grabbed a couple of pictures that that was all that she had left. And I said, I, I, I cannot imagine what you're going through. I'm so sorry that you're dealing with this. We're going to work hard to try to help. She said, I thank God I'm alive. I thank God for that firefighter who came in there and risked his life to save me. I'm grateful for all of these volunteers in this shelter, and she had already talked to several of them who had flooding in their home, but they were at this shelter helping her. And she said, you know, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. That's the kind of spirit that we have in North Carolina. And when I, I leave a conversation like that, I am determined that she's going to make it. We've got to pull together all of our resources in an unprecedented way. We've already made, well, number one, we put together, I think, uh, the quickest, most comprehensive damage assessment that we possibly could have done. I want to give my team and my staff, my budget director, everybody pulling together because if you don't have good numbers, you're not going to be able to convince people of the need. And we put together good numbers to be able to show the damages that are out there in Eastern North Carolina. And we presented those, a $1.5 billion package to the state legislature. They appropriated about half of that, which I was pleased, and I think they're gonna come back and, and do even more. We have requested help from the federal government. I was in Washington yesterday there was a bipartisan meeting of the congressional delegation. Everybody said to each other, this is not a Republican Democratic thing. We have to get help for our state. We were all in lockstep on this proposal that I brought up there, asking for $5 billion. But when you got a $17 billion storm, you need significant help from the federal government. You need significant help from state government. Local governments need to step up as much as possible. Our business community needs to step up. Our groups of faith need to step up, and our volunteers, and have they ever. We've got people across this state who just don't talk about their faith. I've seen it in action. Uh, when I helped to do a muck and gut in Lumberton for two hours at a house and was taking ibuprofen for three days afterward, uh, I could tell the hard work that's going on out there by volunteers, people who just have been nonstop with feeding and help and clothing. We've got, I think, an organization that has responded extraordinarily well to this storm, but now the hard part comes, the recovery, and how we're gonna do that. With this proposal we've made at the state level and at the federal level, It'll help us provide help to our schools. 
It'll help us provide help to our infrastructure. It'll help us provide help to our farmers. And let me say, we need to go above and beyond the traditional agricultural programs here. Because we've got farmers, I've talked to a lot of them, been in a lot of fields, that for the last four years have not been good. 23 months ago was Matthew. A lot of these same farmers hit. They had a bad year in between there. Now Florence. Now trade problems that's causing commodity prices to drop. They're in a vice. And many of them are going to have to choose to get out of the business. And we're talking about an economic driver, surely for Eastern North Carolina, but for our entire state. So we've got to help our farms. We've got to help our small businesses. And affordable housing for people. People deserve a clean place to live. And we're talking about 500-year floods. We've had three 500-year floods in 19 years, and two of them in the last 23 months. Guess what? They're not 500-year floods. We have to rebuild smarter. We have to be more resilient. We're going to have to make some tough decisions at the local level. I know rural counties are worried about losing population, and I worry about that too. But we can't just continue to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild in the floodplain without thought, without elevation and mitigation and resilience. There's going to need to be some buyouts. We're going to have to make our wastewater treatment plants stronger and more resilient. We cannot afford to have the entire country having to go around the state of North Carolina because I-95 and I-40 are covered with water for days and days. We cannot afford that. We need more resilient roads. So we're going to approach this thing in a comprehensive way. Now, when I came into office, North Carolina had gotten uh, additional help for the hurricane, for Hurricane Matthew, and uh, hundreds of millions of dollars were put on the ground. But we also had this community development block grant, which uh, the legislature had moved to be administered by the Department of Emergency Management, which had really never done this before. And HUD in Washington continued to deal with commerce, which was their designated point of contact in the state of North Carolina. And commerce didn't have really the people to deal with this. So we didn't have a coordinated effort. And one of the reasons with the community development block grant funds with Matthew, they weren't going out at the pace we wanted them to go. We had a lot of other help that was going at a good pace, like the hazard mitigation grant funds, et cetera. But I decided that what we needed to do, particularly after Florence hit, was we needed a comprehensive office to run all of this. And we have therefore set up the Office of Recovery and Resilience. The General Assembly gave the stamp of approval to this in our hurricane package. It will work as a sister agency with the Department of Emergency Management. But we've hired some people who have experience with commu uh, community development block grants, disaster relief funds. And we, we have people who are experienced with resilience. And we're taking uh, lessons learned from recent hurricanes across the country. And this office is going to work the way it should, and it's going to coordinate with you to make sure that North Carolina is recovering smarter and stronger. And the thing about this storm, too, we know it because we're living in rural North Carolina, but it put a spotlight on a lot of challenges that were already there. Challenges of affordable housing already there. Challenges of access to health care already there. Challenges of quality education and growing the economy already there. We need to push this next legislative session for efforts that will ring true in our rural communities and our entire state. We have an ability now to significantly increase access to health care in our rural communities. If we can leverage this budget next year 
to bring in three to four billion dollars from the federal government to create 40,000 new good paying health care jobs to get more indigent people off our role ro indigent roles and help bolster rural hospitals and rural medical providers if we can just say yes to Medicaid expansion <laughs> we We can make a big difference in our state. And I'm willing to negotiate this so that it is a true North Carolina plan which fits with us, that helps us fight the opioid crisis, that allows us to leverage as many of those federal dollars with as little cost to the state as possible. We can do this. And you can bring great ideas and policy together through consensus and through negotiation. And people might have different ideas about how to come at it. And it might be an ugly process, but you take in all of the, the input that you have and you, and you get to a place that can move our state forward. It won't be what everybody wants, but it can move us forward in the area of access to healthcare in our state. And I need you to help us do that. I need you to help us with rural legislators and getting them to understand how important this is. We're gonna to have to continue to ramp up our workforce efforts through our community colleges. My NC Job Ready is understanding that we have a workforce that needs to be ready for the new jobs that are changing every single day. And rural North Carolina has a niche in this. We know small business is the biggest part of the economy in rural North Carolina, and we've got to do things to, to keep them vibrant in our developments of our downtowns and doing things we know are important. But we can draw great advanced manufacturing and other kinds of facilities. We've already started doing it. You know, we know what happened with Triangle Tire and Corning and some of the other companies that we have recruited to rural North Carolina because, hey, we know the challenges, but what about the strengths? The lower cost of living, the greater space, the amazing people who live there, the quality of life. Rural North Carolina is a great place for people to be, and there are businesses who will want to go there. We just need to know that, that we can provide them with the support that they need. We know that we've got to have broadband access throughout rural North Carolina. I have seen, <laughs> I have seen small businesses and farmers just take off when they've been able to get access to that. We know we're gonna be able to improve healthcare with greater use of telemedicine. We know we'll be able to close that homework gap with kids who, yeah, we got all our schools wired, that's great. But some of these kids go home and they don't have it. And there's a homework gap because of it. We've got to make sure we expand broadband, and we need to put some skin in the game. We asked the legislature for some help last year. They gave us a little bit. It was a little more restrictive than we wanted. But we've got to le leverage public-private partnerships. Uh, we've got to let local governments do more. We can get broadband throughout North Carolina, and it has to be a goal. And I've instructed, instructed my cabinet, uh, IT cabinet, to make sure they work. We need better infrastructure. We need to pass a school bond this time, uh, $2 billion to help our local schools. Need it particularly more than ever with this hurricane that, that has hit us. And I'm proud of our hometown strong effort. Uh, Patrick, you mentioned Prior Gibson, Mary Penny Thompson, Timothy Webster. They're all working in these counties across North Carolina. When you have a small rural county that often feels like nobody pays attention to them, and all of a sudden, the Secretary of Health and Human Resources and the Secretary of Public Safety and the Secretary of Commerce and, and members of other parts of the governor's cabinets and high representatives from the governor's office and sometimes me show up around the table to talk about their challenges and how we can help fix them. It matters because often counties, rural counties particularly, don't have the infrastructure help. They're just trying to keep the trains on the track. They're trying to keep things running. And it's hard for them to figure out how to connect the dots with the Department of Environmental Quality 
and Commerce and the Economic Development Partnership, Hometown Strong helps break down those silos and gets people talking. And they've got my direction. My cabinet members have my direction that when Hometown Strong calls and these rural counties need help, you guys go and help. It's not going to be magic. We're not going to come in with hundreds of millions of dollars. But what we can do is help provide avenues for access to grants, help simple problems that can get solved simply through communications and a state government doing something that they need to do. And I'm committed that rural North Carolina is going to thrive. And we do have this challenge of an urban-rural divide, that is true. But we cannot fight each other. A rising tide lifts all boats, and probably that's a bad example with the hurricane that we've had. But it is true that we're all in this thing together, and we've got to continue working on it. I'm grateful for the work you're doing. You've got my commitment to help. My mission statement is, don't want to disappoint you, Patrick. I want to know North Carolina where people are better educated, where they are healthier, where they have more money in their pockets, and they have opportunities to live a more abundant and purposeful life. That is my mission statement for North Carolina. My cabinet members hear that charge from me frequently. My staff members hear that charge from me. I want everything they do to work toward that goal. We have the greatest state in the country. We're going to be successful. We're the most military-friendly state in the country. Our military bases got hurt some during this hurricane. We're trying to help them as well. Our teachers need our help. We need a great teacher in every classroom, great principal, in every school and we can solve a lot of pro problems with public education we got to make sure that the teaching profession is respected we span scholarships to get more teachers <laughs> we can do this thing North Carolina is great we have a great history of moving forward I know we can do it with your help we need a North Carolina that is willing to make sure that our Governments, our agencies, our businesses look like the people that they serve and protect. We've got to ensure that we are creating and strengthening diversity because when that happens, we succeed. And I'm so excited about the next two years in our state. I'll work with you to make sure we have a North Carolina that works for everyone. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.